I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Late in the summer of 2021, Calvin Hughes, an avid fisherman from coastal Maine, decided to venture out on a solo overnight fishing trip along the rugged, isolated shores of Moosehead Lake. Known for its pristine waters and abundant fish, the lake also carried an air of mystery, with locals whispering about unexplained phenomena and disappearances in the area. Calvin, a pragmatist by nature, shrugged off these tales as mere superstitions, focusing instead on the potential for a bountiful catch. He arrived late in the afternoon, the sun casting long shadows over the dense pine forest surrounding the lake. After setting up his small camp on a secluded cove, Calvin prepared his fishing gear with practiced hands, eager to take advantage of the evening bite. As he cast his line into the clear, cold water from his small boat, the serene beauty of the lake unfolded around him, the surface mirroring the sky as twilight deepened. However, as darkness settled, a dense fog began to roll in from the lake thicker than Calvin had ever seen before. The fog enveloped everything, dampening sounds and reducing his world to a few feet around his boat. The air grew markedly colder, and Calvin pulled his jacket tighter around him, his unease growing as the visibility worsened. The only sounds were the gentle lapping of water against the hull of his boat and the distant calls of loons, eerie and mournful under the cloak of fog. Calvin decided to keep fishing despite the fog, relying on his intimate knowledge of the lake's topography to maintain his bearings. As he adjusted his position, he heard a soft splash not far from the boat, different from the rhythm of the waves. Straining to see through the dense fog, Calvin saw nothing that could have caused the noise. He shook off a chill, attributing the sound to a fish jumping or perhaps a branch falling into the water. Moments later, another splash, this time closer, accompanied by a faint dragging sound, like something heavy being pulled through the water. Calvin peered into the fog, his heart rate increasing. Hello? He called out, wondering if another boat was out there, lost in the fog like him. No answer came back, only the soft echo of his own voice across the water. Unsettled, Calvin decided to start his small boat's motor and head back to camp until the fog lifted. But as he reached for the ignition, the engine sputtered and died refusing to start despite his repeated attempts. He checked the fuel, it was full. The battery was new, but now mysteriously, it was dead. Stranded on the lake, Calvin settled in, wrapping himself in a thermal blanket against the unseasonable cold. The fog seemed to close in even tighter, and the splashes continued, now accompanied by a low, dragging sound moving around the boat. Calvin's mind raced with possibilities, none of them comforting. Trying to pierce the thick veil of fog with his flashlight yielded nothing but a few feet of visibility. Then, directly beside the boat, the water stirred violently as if something massive had surfaced and then quickly submerged. Calvin recoiled, his heart pounding, scanning the water with his light. But there was only the fog, thick and impenetrable, and the now constant sound of something moving in the water, encircling him. The story of Calvin Hughes, alone on Moosehead Lake, was far from over. As the night stretched on, the fog never lifted, and the sounds in the water grew closer, more insistent. What lurked in the lake remained unseen, hidden in the enveloping mist, but it was clear that Calvin was not alone, and whatever accompanied him was not just a figment of local lore. Calvin's senses were heightened to every sound, every slight movement of water around his stranded boat. The repetitive dragging noise had developed a rhythmic pattern almost like a creature slowly circling its prey. He tried to keep his composure, telling himself that it could be a large fish or perhaps debris moved by undercurrents. But the fear that gripped him suggested something far more sinister. With the cold seeping into his bones and his boat dead in the water, Calvin realized he needed to act. He searched through his gear for anything that could be useful. Finding a heavy-duty flashlight and a flare gun, he prepared to defend himself if necessary. His hand gripped the flare gun tightly as he scanned the fog-shrouded darkness, his mind racing with thoughts of what might emerge from the lake. Hours passed, and the sounds continued, a constant reminder of his vulnerability. Suddenly, the boat jerked sharply, as if something had bumped against it from below. Calvin nearly lost his balance, catching himself on the edge of the boat. His heart raced as he aimed the flashlight down into the water, 
but the beam penetrated only a few inches into the murky darkness. Feeling more trapped than ever, Calvin decided that if he couldn't drive the boat, perhaps he could at least radio for help. He dug out his handheld radio and tried to send a distress signal, hoping the fog wouldn't impede the transmission too much. After several attempts, a crackling voice responded, barely audible over the static. Boat on Moosehead Lake, please repeat your position, the dispatcher requested, her voice a lifeline in the oppressive fog. Calvin replied, stating his last known coordinates and describing his situation. He was told to stay put and that help would come at first light. Relief washed over him briefly until he remembered that first light was hours away, and whatever was in the water seemed undeterred by his attempts to scare it off. Determined to make it through the night, Calvin kept his eyes glued to the opaque water, the flare gun ready. Every splash and every brush against the boat tightened the knot of fear in his stomach. He tried to stay alert, fighting the exhaustion that clawed at him. As the night wore on, the temperature dropped further, and Calvin wrapped himself tighter in the thermal blanket. Just when he thought things couldn't get worse, a dense mist began to rise from the lake itself, swirling around his boat and reducing his visibility to nearly zero. His flashlight beam now seemed utterly useless, swallowed up by the thickening fog. Then, the noises stopped abruptly. The silence was as jarring as the noises had been, a suffocating, heavy quiet that seemed to press in on Calvin. He strained his ears but heard nothing, not even the call of a loon or the rustle of wind. It was as if the lake itself was holding its breath. Suddenly, a low, mournful moan echoed across the water, a sound so filled with sorrow and despair that Calvin felt it in his very bones. It was followed by a splash much larger than any before, close to the boat. Calvin jerked around, the flare gun raised, his finger trembling on the trigger. The moaning grew louder, a heart-wrenching sound that seemed almost human. Calvin's breath caught in his throat as he glimpsed something moving through the fog. A figure, large and looming, its outline blurred but unmistakably headed towards him. As it drew nearer, the details became clearer, revealing features that were grotesquely twisted, not entirely human nor animal, but something horrifically in between. Frozen in fear, Calvin could only watch as the creature emerged fully from the mist, its eyes glowing a faint, unnatural blue, locked onto his. The story of Calvin Hughes, lost on Moosehead Lake, was far from over. As the creature approached, every instinct screamed for him to act, to escape the nightmare unfolding before him. But the lake and the fog had claimed him, swallowed into a story that the dawn might never reveal. Calvin's hand shook violently as the creature approached, its massive form gliding silently over the water. The blue glow of its eyes cast an eerie light on its face, revealing a nightmarish visage that seemed stitched together from both human sorrow and aquatic horror. It was as if the depths of Moosehead Lake had given form to every dark legend ever whispered about its waters. The creature stopped just a few feet from Calvin's boat, towering over him. It reached out with limbs that were both sleek like a seal's and grotesquely human, ending in elongated webbed fingers. The moaning had ceased, replaced by a deep, resonant hum that vibrated through the air, feeling almost physical in its intensity. Calvin, frozen by fear, could only stare as the creature observed him, its gaze piercing and ancient. With a sudden surge of desperation, Calvin lifted the flare gun, aiming it directly at the creature's grotesque face. His finger tightened on the trigger, a last instinctual flicker of fight over flight. But before he could fire, the creature moved with startling speed, its hand closing around the barrel of the gun. The pressure was immense, and with a sharp metallic crunch, the flare gun was crushed, rendered useless in Calvin's hands. The creature's other hand reached out, touching Calvin's forehead with a chilling tenderness. At that touch, Calvin's mind was flooded with visions. Dark, swirling memories that were not his own. Horrors of the deep, of loneliness and cold, of being trapped beneath ice, unseen and unheard. Calvin tried to scream, but the sound was muffled, absorbed by the thick fog. The creature leaned closer, its face inches from his, and Calvin saw that its eyes were filled with an unbearable sadness. Then, it spoke, its voice a gurgling echo from the depths. Not alone, never alone. The hand on Calvin's forehead pushed him backward, and he fell into the icy water. The shock of the cold was immediate and brutal, stealing the breath from his lungs. He struggled to surface, but his limbs were heavy, his body unresponsive. 
Above him, the creature watched silently as Calvin sank deeper into the dark waters. The last thing Calvin saw was the glow of those haunting blue eyes fading as he was pulled down into the abyss of the lake. The water filled his lungs, a cold, invasive presence that silenced his pain and his panic. As darkness claimed him, the fog above rolled gently over the lake, erasing all signs of the struggle. When the rescue team arrived in the morning, they found Calvin's campsite abandoned, his boat adrift and empty. The fog had lifted, and the lake was calm, its surface undisturbed by any sign of the night's horrors. Calvin Hughes was never seen again, and his disappearance added another dark layer to the legends of Moosehead Lake, a place where some mysteries refuse to be revealed, and some depths are never meant to be disturbed. On a brisk autumn morning, Tom Fletcher and his sister Anne set out for a weekend fishing trip to Blackwater Lake, a secluded spot known for its thick mists and stories of eerie occurrences. The siblings, both in their 30s and experienced anglers, were drawn to the lake not only for its abundant bass and pike, but also for the thrill of fishing in a place rumored to be haunted. According to local legend, the lake was home to the Whisperer, a spectral figure said to roam the foggy waters, lamenting a long-lost love. Tom and Anne arrived at Blackwater Lake just as the sun was rising, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple. The lake, shrouded in a dense morning mist, appeared otherworldly. They launched their small boat with ease, the water eerily calm and the silence only broken by the distant calls of waterfowl. As they drifted, Tom baited their hooks with live worms and cast the lines into the murky waters. They sat back, waiting for the fish to bite, enveloped by the fog that seemed to isolate them from the rest of the world. It wasn't long before Anne's rod twitched. With practiced ease, she reeled in a large pike, its scales glistening with an almost unnatural sheen. Looks like the legends aren't scaring the fish away, Anne joked, admiring her catch. But Tom wasn't so sure. He felt an inexplicable chill run down his spine as he glanced around the misty lake, feeling watched. As the morning wore on, the fog thickened, reducing their visibility to a few yards. The siblings continued to fish, catching several more pike and bass. However, as they ventured deeper into the lake, a sense of unease began to grow. The water around them seemed to darken, and the air grew colder. Suddenly, a soft, sorrowful wail echoed across the lake, sending shivers through both siblings. Did you hear that? Anne whispered, her voice tense. Tom nodded, scanning the mist for any sign of another boat or person. It's just the wind! he replied, though his own heart raced with a mix of fear and curiosity. They decided to head back, feeling unnerved by the unexplained sound. But as Tom turned the boat around, the engine sputtered and died. He tried to restart it, but it wouldn't respond. They were stuck, adrift in a cloud of fog that seemed to swallow them whole. Stranded, they resorted to using the oars, but their progress was slow. The wailing sound continued intermittently, closer each time, as if moving around them in the fog. What if it's the Whisperer? Anne half-joked, trying to lighten the mood, but her voice betrayed her fear. Tom didn't respond, his eyes fixed on the water where dark shapes seemed to move just below the surface. The atmosphere felt charged, the mist almost palpable. Then, all at once, the temperature dropped, and the siblings could see their breath in the air. Another wail, this time right beside the boat, loud and clear, sent them scrambling for the oars, their hearts pounding. The story of Tom and Anne's fishing trip at Blackwater Lake was far from over. As they rowed frantically, the legend of the Whisperer no longer felt like a quaint local tale, but a terrifying reality. With each stroke of the oars, the fog seemed to close in tighter, and the wailing grew more desperate and mournful. They were not alone on Blackwater Lake, and as they would soon discover, the lake held secrets that the fog was reluctant to reveal. The fog clung to the lake like a living entity, its tendrils curling around Tom and Anne's boat as they rowed with increasing desperation. The wailing grew intermittent, a haunting lull between the strokes of their oars. Every sound seemed amplified, the gentle splash of water against the boat, their labored breathing, and the distant, mournful cries that echoed across the lake. Anne's voice trembled as she spoke. Tom, do you see that? She pointed toward a vague shape that seemed to glide just beneath the surface of the water, a shadow that moved too purposefully to be a fish. Tom paused, squinting through the dense mist, 
his hand tightening around the oar. The shape vanished as quickly as it appeared, leaving a small ripple in its wake. Just keep rowing, Tom muttered, his voice barely above a whisper. He didn't want to admit it, but fear was creeping up his spine. The stories they had laughed off were now at the forefront of his mind, each paddle stroke bringing them further into the heart of the legend they had sought to explore. As they rowed, the water around them seemed to grow thicker, almost oily in its consistency. Tom noticed it first on his oars, a slight resistance as if the lake itself was trying to hold them back. Anne felt it too, her brow furrowed in concentration as she pulled her oar through the heavy water. The temperature dropped further, and a thin layer of ice began to form along the edges of the boat. The fog obscured the early morning sun, casting the entire lake into a perpetual twilight. The boundary between day and night blurred as they found themselves enveloped in a chilling grayness. The wailing stopped abruptly, replaced by a deafening silence that pressed against their ears. It was the calm before a storm, filled with tension and unspoken dread. Tom and Anne exchanged a look, their faces pale and eyes wide with fear. Neither needed to speak. The urgency to leave the lake was understood. And their silent agreement was shattered by a sudden movement beside the boat. Water churned violently as something emerged from the depths. Tom instinctively reached for his fishing knife, his other hand steadying the boat as Anne recoiled in shock. What they saw next would haunt their dreams for years to come. Rising from the lake was not the spectral figure of a mournful spirit, but something far more ancient and malevolent. A vast serpentine neck broke the surface, covered in scales that shimmered with a ghostly light. The creature's head was horse-like, its eyes a deep, glowing red that fixed on Tom and Anne with predatory interest. The creature opened its mouth, revealing rows of sharp, jagged teeth, and let out a wail that was now clearly recognizable as a predatory call. Tom and Anne were frozen in terror, the reality of their situation crashing down on them like a wave. They were in the presence of something that belonged to the depths of the lake, a guardian of its secrets, an enforcer of its solitude. The creature's gaze held them captive, and as it moved closer, the water around the boat began to swirl, forming a vortex that threatened to pull them under. The story of their fishing trip, once a thrilling adventure into the unknown, was now a desperate struggle for survival. As they grasped each other's hands, the cold water lapping at the edges of the boat, Tom and Anne realized that some legends are rooted in truth, and some truths are better left undiscovered. The fog of Blackwater Lake held them tight, not yet ready to release its grip or reveal its final secrets. As the creature circled closer, the swirling water around their boat grew more violent, pulling them towards its gaping maw. Tom and Anne clung to each other, their eyes wide with terror as they realized their escape was impossible. The creature's wails morphed into a deep, resonant growl that vibrated through the water, paralyzing them with fear. In a desperate, last-ditch effort, Tom grabbed the flare gun from his pack, his hands trembling as he aimed it directly at the creature's massive head. With a silent prayer, he pulled the trigger, the flare arcing through the misty air, a streak of desperate hope in the grim twilight. It struck the creature directly in one of its glowing red eyes. The beast reared back, emitting a horrifying scream that echoed across the lake, its pain momentarily overshadowing its anger. The impact of the flare stunned the creature, and for a moment, the waters calmed. Tom seized the opportunity, grabbing the oars and rowing with all his might. Anne, spurred by her brother's actions, took up the second oar, and together they paddled furiously, trying to put as much distance as possible between them and the beast. But the respite was short-lived. With a furious roar, the creature recovered and plunged back into the lake, the water boiling around its serpentine form. It moved with terrifying speed, its body undulating powerfully beneath the surface, propelling it towards the fleeing boat. Tom and Anne watched in horror as the water behind them bulged, signaling the creature's imminent breach. As it erupted from the lake, its entire colossal form became visible in the eerie light, the scales along its body shimmering with an unnatural luminescence, its injured eye now a smoldering ruin. The creature's second leap was aimed directly at the boat. With a force that turned the night into day, it crashed down upon them, its massive jaws wide open. The last thing Tom and Anne saw was a vision of sharp teeth descending, the stench of the creature's breath overwhelming them, 
and the chilling realization that the lake's legend was dreadfully real. Their screams were cut short as the boat was shattered into splinters, swallowed by the dark waters of Blackwater Lake. The mist closed in, muffling the sounds of the struggle, returning the lake to a state of deceptive calm. In the days that followed, when the fog finally lifted, searchers would find the remnants of their boat scattered along the shore, but of Tom and Anne, there would be no trace. Whisperer of Blackwater Lake, as the locals called the creature, had reclaimed its territory, adding another layer to its legend, a haunting tale of a brother and sister who vanished into the fog, never to be seen again. In the early spring of 2022, Ethan Wallace, a retired school teacher with a newfound passion for fishing, embarked on a solo trip to the secluded waters of Lake Marrowbone in Tennessee. This lake, surrounded by dense forests and steeped in eerie local folklore, was said to be haunted by the Marrowbone Spectre, a ghostly figure seen rowing in the thickest fogs of early morning. Despite his pragmatic nature, Ethan was intrigued by these tales which added an element of thrill to his fishing adventure. Ethan arrived at Lake Marrowbone as the dawn was breaking, the early morning mist rolling over the calm, glassy surface of the lake. He unloaded his small aluminum boat equipped with just the essentials, a fishing rod, a tackle box, and a cooler with food and drinks. As he pushed off from the shore, the cool, damp air enveloped him, and the sound of the water lapping gently against the sides of the boat was calming, yet isolating. No. He rode to the middle of the lake, where the waters were deepest and the fish were said to be plentiful. As he settled in and cast his line, the sun rose fully, burning away some of the mist and revealing the rugged beauty of the surrounding wilderness. The peacefulness of the lake was absolute, disturbed only by the occasional call of a distant bird or the gentle ripple of water around his boat. However, as the morning progressed, a thick fog began to roll back over the lake, much denser than before engulfing Ethan's boat and reducing his visibility to a mere few feet. The temperature dropped, and the air grew colder, a typical phenomenon by the lake, but unnervingly intense. Ethan felt a slight unease creep into his spine as the lake and its shores vanished behind a curtain of white. Remembering the local stories, Ethan chuckled to himself, dismissing the ghost tales as he checked his line. But then, a subtle sound caught his attention, the soft rhythmic splash of oars. He listened closely, and sure enough, the unmistakable sound of another boat rowing in the fog reached his ears. Assuming it was another fisherman, Ethan called out, Hello! A bit foggy for fishing, isn't it? No reply came, and the rowing sounds ceased abruptly. The silence that followed was deep and complete. Ethan strained his eyes through the fog, but he could see nothing. A feeling of isolation washed over him, as if he were the only person in the world. Deciding to change his location, Ethan started his small outboard motor. Just as he was about to turn the boat around, the engine sputtered and died. He tried to start it again with no luck. It was as dead as the heavy air around him. Slightly alarmed now, Ethan grabbed the oars and began to row back towards the shore. However, the fog seemed to thicken with every stroke, disorienting him, making it difficult to find his bearings. Then the rowing sound started again, closer this time, circling around him. Ethan stopped rowing, listening. The sound was methodical, deliberate, sending a chill down his spine. He called out again, Who's there? Can you help me find the shore? Again, there was no response, just the continuous sound of rowing that seemed to be coming from just beyond the veil of fog. As Ethan sat there, trying to decide what to do next, he noticed something even stranger. The water around his boat began to ripple, as though something, or someone, was moving beneath the surface. The story of Ethan Wallace alone on Lake Marrowbone, was far from over. As the fog enveloped everything, the line between legend and reality began to blur, and Ethan realized that the lake might hold deeper secrets than he had ever imagined. Ethan's heart pounded in his chest as he gripped the oars tighter, the eerie silence punctuated only by the soft splash of the unseen rower. He considered yelling out again but hesitated, the unsettling thought that perhaps he was better off not drawing attention to himself creeping into his mind. He rowed slowly, cautiously, trying to keep his movements quiet. The sound of the other oars continued, seemingly matching his pace. Every now and then, Ethan would stop rowing, hoping the other rower would pass by or reveal themselves. 
Each time he stopped, so did the sounds. The mysterious rower was deliberately staying just out of sight, maintaining a distance that kept Ethan uncertain and on edge. As the fog grew even thicker, a chill seeped into the air, penetrating Ethan's clothes and chilling him to the bone. The lake, usually a place of tranquility and isolation, now felt like a trap, closing in on him with every moment that passed. Ethan's logical mind struggled to maintain control over his rising panic, reminding himself that there must be a reasonable explanation for what was happening. With a sudden burst of resolve, Ethan decided to confront the situation directly. He stopped rowing and shouted into the fog, I don't know who you are, but please, if you need help, tell me. If you want me to leave, I'll go. Just say something. His voice echoed over the lake, the words hanging in the dense air. There was a long silence. Then, just as Ethan's hope began to falter, a voice, soft and melancholic, drifted across the water. You cannot leave, it said, the tone neither threatening nor friendly. It was a simple statement of fact, delivered with a sorrowful resignation that sent shivers down Ethan's spine. Ethan's mouth went dry and he called back, Why not? Who are you? There was no response. He waited, each second stretching out interminably, until the rowing sound started again, this time moving away from him. Relieved, yet still frightened, Ethan took this chance to row vigorously in the opposite direction, hoping to find the shore and escape the oppressive fog. As he rowed, the legend of the Marabone Specter replayed in his mind, the stories he had dismissed now seeming like dire warnings. After what felt like hours, the fog began to lighten slightly, a sign that he might be nearing the shore. Just as he began to feel a flicker of hope, something brushed against the bottom of his boat, a gentle but firm bump that startled him. He froze, listening. The water was silent again, the fog now a mere wisp around him. Suddenly, the water beneath the boat erupted as something large and dark broke the surface. Ethan barely had time to react as he saw, not a ghostly specter, but a massive, shadowy figure in the water, its form obscured by the remaining mist. The boat rocked violently, water splashing into it, soaking him instantly. Terrified, Ethan realized that whatever was in the lake with him was something far more tangible and dangerous than a ghost. The creature, or whatever it was, circled the boat, creating waves that rocked him back and forth. Ethan clung to the sides, his eyes wide as he tried to catch a glimpse of the figure through the gloom. The story of Ethan Wallace, once a simple fisherman seeking solace in nature, had turned into a grim tale of survival. As he struggled to maintain balance in his small boat, the reality of his situation set in. Lake Marrowbone was not just a lake of folklore and whispers, it was a living, breathing entity, holding secrets beneath its surface that were as dark and deep as the water itself. Ethan's grip tightened on the boat's edges as the shadowy figure circled closer, the dark waters churning around him. His heart raced with a primal fear, his mind grappling with the realization that the creature beneath was not just a product of local legends, but a living, menacing presence in the lake. As the figure neared, Ethan could see more details. It was immense, larger than any fish he had ever known, its scales glistening with a sinister, oily sheen under the weak morning light that now penetrated the fog. Its movements were deliberate, powerful, sending waves that rocked the boat more violently. With each pass, the creature seemed to be gauging him, its enormous body brushing against the underside of the boat, each contact a thunderous thud that threatened to throw him into the icy waters. Desperate, Ethan searched through his belongings for anything that could be used as a weapon. His hands found the flare gun, left over from his earlier hopes of signaling for help. Shaking, he loaded it, knowing this might be his only chance. As the creature made another pass, closer this time, Ethan took aim and fired directly into the murky figure below. The flare struck true, illuminating the water with a haunting red glow and eliciting an ear-splitting screech from the creature. The water boiled around the flare's entry point, steam and foul-smelling vapor rising into the air. But the attack only provoked the beast further. With a sudden surge, the creature rose partially above the water, revealing its grotesque features. A head resembling that of a pike, but many times larger, with deep, soulless eyes and a jaw lined with rows of razor-sharp teeth, dripping with the remnants of its previous meals. In a split second of terror and clarity, Ethan saw the creature's massive tail whip towards the boat. 
The impact was monstrous, shattering the boat into splinters and throwing Ethan into the cold, dark water. His last thoughts were a mix of regret and disbelief as the cold waters enveloped him, pulling him down into the depths. The creature's dark form enveloped him, dragging him deeper into the lake. Ethan's lungs screamed for air, but there was none. Only the cold, pressing darkness of Lake Marrowbone, now his eternal prison. When the local search team arrived days later, spurred by the abandoned car near the lake's edge, they found debris from a small boat scattered along the shore and an eerie calm upon the water. No trace of Ethan was ever found, and as the mist settled once again over Lake Marrowbone, the whispering stories of the Marrowbone Spectre grew into a mournful howl. Ethan's disappearance became just another part of the lake's dark lore, whispered about in hushed tones by those who knew enough to fear the water's deep and its hungry inhabitants. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 